It doesn't matter if you're in economy or business class, flying is just plain hard on the body. And there's a science to long haul flight comfort. In this video, I'm sharing all, and I mean all of my top long haul flight hacks, long haul flight essentials, and more. So you can not only survive, but thrive on your next trip. And you can learn why this shirt is my secret weapon. And also make sure you watch to the end for a secret tip that I probably should not be sharing with the world. And I might get some flack for it, but in the name of helping everybody travel smart in style, I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's do this. Surviving a long haul flight begins long before you get on board. Let's start with seat selection. Now, there's a whole debate about windows versus aisles, and honestly, it's a personal preference as to which type of seat will suit you better when you fly long haul. Personally, I'm a big fan of window seats because they're a little more private and I won't be disturbed by anybody who needs to get up to go to the bathroom if I'm sleeping or working. And I also like using the wall beside me to lean on if I wanna sleep. Also, I'm a huge fan of just plain looking out the window. Uh, I actually like to get time-lapse videos of every takeoff and landing. It's a thing I do. However, if you'd like aisle seats, then I suggest you pick one in the middle section. They're less likely to be booked up since seat grippings on the edges of the plane tend to be booked by people traveling in pairs. And since nobody likes a middle seat, the middle seats in the middle section are like the no man's land of airplane seats. So if the plane isn't full, you just might find that you've got a little more space to yourself with your middle section aisle seat. Also, if you have one of these seats and you're on a plane that has only three seats in the middle, you have a 50% less chance of being disturbed by the person sitting in the middle seat if they have to get up, since they could go either way. Which means if you are sleeping, there's a greater chance that your sleep might actually go undisturbed. Also, seats near the back of the plane tend to be less popular, which gives you two advantages if you choose them. One, you'll be among the first to board, which means you'll have a greater chance of getting any carry-on luggage that you have in the overhead bin directly above your seat. Two, if the plane isn't fully booked, you'll have a greater chance of having more space to yourself at the back of the plane. The disadvantage, of course, is that you're also the last to get off the plane. But frankly, if you've already spent six, eight, 10, 12, 14 hours on the flight, really, what's another 15 minutes? One cautionary note, however, if you choose a seat close to the galley or the bathrooms, you may have to deal with people lining up for the bathroom and hovering over you, and or the light and noise of the galley activities, and possibly even a little bit of bathroom stink. Pro tip. I use SeatGuru.com when I'm selecting my seats so I can see a layout of the exact plane that I'm gonna be on and select the best seat for my needs. SeatGuru is great about showing optimal seats as well as seats with slight obstructions or challenges as well as seats to avoid at all costs. The next stage of long haul flight comfort is to carefully select what to wear on the plane. First up, I never fly without wearing compression socks. A friend of mine who is also a professional full-time traveler almost died from deep vein thrombosis while on a long haul flight. While deep vein thrombosis isn't specifically tied to flying, three of the main causes are being over the age of 40, being dehydrated, and not moving around for long periods of time. Age aside, dehydration and not moving around are classic long haul flight activities, or lack thereof. Also, if you've recently had surgery or you're a woman on birth control, you are at an elevated risk. Get it? Elevated? Compression socks help with increasing blood circulation, which reduces the chances of getting blood clots, which if they move up to your heart can be life-threatening. But also, flying is just plain hard on the body, which I've already said. I find that my feet swell up when I'm on a long haul flight and it can sometimes take days for the swelling to go away. Compression socks help massively with this. Lastly, I don't know if it's psychosomatic or not, but I get restless legs a lot when I fly and compression socks seem to help with this as well. And compression socks can actually also be handy at your destination. If you'd like to go hiking or running, then compression socks are actually fantastic. I find they give me more energy. I'm not really entirely sure why, but I'll take it. Next up, wear loose fitting clothes. It's not just your feet that swell up when you fly. Your whole body can swell depending on what you eat before you fly. The swelling may vary. We'll get to that in a minute. But since flying is inherently uncomfortable, the more you can do to be comfortable in your seat, the more comfortable air travel will be. Lastly, dress in layers. This gives you the ability to take some layers off if you feel overheated, but then also to pile the layers on if you get cold. In my experience, long haul flights are frigid and I usually need every layer I've got. Now, let's talk about what to bring on board for your next long haul flight. You might wanna check out my episode about carry-on essentials to see what goes into my personal item bag, which includes this little bag. 
of in-flight comfort items. I mentioned in that video that I tend to have pain in my ears on descent because of the cabin pressure and that I use nasal decongestant for it. So when a viewer asked me why I wasn't using earplanes, I thought it was a typo. I thought he meant earplugs. Turns out earplanes are a thing. They actually help people who have pain in their ears when the plane descends. I'm that person. Needless to say, I'm going to try them out on my next flight. I also suggest having or wearing something that allows you to keep your valuables on you at all times. Whether it's a vest with pockets or a hip bag or a fanny pack or my beloved crossbody tech bag, I try to make sure that it's something unobtrusive that I can keep on me for the entire time that I'm on the flight. It doesn't need to be large, basically just large enough to keep your passport, phone, and wallet. While I would generally like to assume that nobody will steal my purse if it's under the seat in front of me and I go to the bathroom or I'm sleeping, I'd just rather not leave that to chance. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but some airlines now include in their initial announcements that if you've lost your phone between the seats, you need to ask them to help you retrieve it. I can only imagine this has become a problem because people don't have a secure place for their phones while they're flying and it falls out of their pockets while they're busy contorting themselves into an effort to get comfortable on the flight. So if you have your phone in a bag like this or in a pocket that securely zips, then you won't be that person who loses their phone between the seats. Pro tip, take whatever you need for your flight out of your carry-on luggage that will go in the overhead bin before you board the plane. That way you won't need to access your luggage while you're in the air, which saves the awkwardness of trying to do it in the middle of the aisle or the seat, especially if it's hard-sided luggage and you have to open up the whole bloody thing to get whatever you need. Also, having what you need in your personal item bag helps if you don't manage to get your luggage in the bin directly above your seat. I already mentioned dressing in layers, but I'll say it again here. Bring a warm layer on board. Those airplane blankets aren't always comfortable or big enough or warm enough. Bonus, a sweater or jacket that you're not actually wearing can be bunched up and used as a makeshift pillow. If you want to level up this strategy, bring along a pillowcase and stuff it with a few clothing items to use as a pillow on board. This is part of the pillowcase hack strategy that I refer to in my episode about reducing carry-on baggage fees. In terms of entertainment, I tend to use the in-flight entertainment system on the seat back in front of me, or I read my Kindle, or I get some work done on my laptop. But I notice a lot of people these days tend to watch their favorite shows on their own devices. To that end, make sure that you download shows to your phone or tablet in advance of your flight. While you're busy downloading shows, download the airlines app as well. Some airlines that don't have screens on the seat back in front of you will give you in-flight access to entertainment through special in-flight Wi-Fi that you can watch on your devices, but only if you've downloaded the app in advance. Lastly, you may also want to download music or meditations that can help you sleep as well as block out some noise. Rounding out this beefy category of what to bring on board are three last things. One is a power bank to charge your devices that may not have a long battery life, just in case there are no outlets at your seat. And of course it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, make sure your devices are fully charged before flying. Two is a change of clothes. Not only is it advisable to have a change of clothes with you on board, especially if you're checking luggage and that luggage gets lost, but you may just wanna change your clothes at the end of a long haul flight so you feel a little more human on arrival. This last one is a bit unconventional and you won't need it on board so much as when you land. And this is a global data SIM card or eSIM. I love using a global data SIM card because as soon as I land, no matter where I am in the world, I immediately have a data connection without having to do anything. I travel a lot, so having global data particularly makes sense for me. This makes it possible to hop on, on an Uber right away or check my messages in case I need to get in touch with somebody at my destination who maybe is picking me up and more. I don't need to worry about whether or not there's a kiosk to buy a SIM card at the airport or if the kiosk is closed because I'm arriving at an awkward time. I have another episode about international cell phone tips that goes deep into various ways that you can stay connected while you travel. I'll also leave a link in the description to some global data SIM card options for you to check out. Believe it or not, we're not done. Technically, we haven't even gotten on the plane yet. This section is about tips for in-flight comfort. Some of these tips also include things to bring, but they do deserve to be in this category in terms of in-flight comfort. You'll see what I mean in a minute. First up, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Flying dries you out like nobody's business. And that can cause all kinds of problems from dry skin to swelling to headaches and more. I don't tend to drink a lot on short flights because I don't want to get up and pee. But when it comes to long haul flights, there's no getting around the fact that I'm going to have to pee. So I may as well drink up. 
And if you're like me and you're used to drinking a healthy amount of water on the ground, you may want to bring some electrolytes with you to enhance the hydration element while you're in the air. I always make sure to have my reusable water bottle with me and I fill it up in the airport after clearing security so I have a full liter to start with. If you need to refill on the airplane, which you should if it's a long haul flight, don't fill it up with water from the plane taps in the bathroom. Don't even brush your teeth with this water. Those water tanks on airplanes are notoriously crawling with icky things. So instead, I ask the flight attendant to fill it for me because they use bottled water. So I'm not entirely saving the planet with this because of course this is getting refilled with plastic bottled water, but at least they're larger bottles. And more importantly, I don't have to get hundred refills of the tiny water cups that they hand out. I can get one refill of my large bottle and be good for a big chunk of the flight. If the flight attendant is nonplussed by you handing them a large water bottle to refill, then you can just tell them that they don't need to fill it entirely, but that you would appreciate not creating additional waste with the disposable cups. Honestly, how can they argue with that? Now, what's the opposite of hydration? You got it, dehydration. And that's what you're gonna do to yourself if you drink coffee or alcohol before or during your flight. First off, both coffee and alcohol are diuretics, which means you're gonna have to pee more often than necessary, which on a flight is not a good thing. I mean, you have seen those bathrooms, right? And if you're like me and you have a credit card to give you lounge access, you might be inspired to have that glass of wine before your flight or even with your meal on the flight, especially if you think it's gonna help you sleep. But just be aware, it is completely counterproductive on the hydration front at least. So if you drink a glass of wine on your next flight and you end up with a headache, don't say I didn't warn you. Flights don't just dry out your insides, they dry out your outside as well, like lips and skin. So to enhance your in-flight comfort, you might wanna bring some lip balm and moisturizer for your face and hands. And if despite your best efforts, you still end up with a dehydration headache, make sure you bring painkillers. I remember one awful long haul flight where I had two glasses of wine before getting on the plane. And I had a headache so bad that it devolved into a full on migraine and I had nothing to take away the pain on a 14 hour flight, never again. In terms of eating, cabin pressure changes at altitude make things swell, including the gas inside your body. This is why you fart more when you fly. And don't tell me that you don't fart when you fly, we all do. The trick is to fart less. And the way to do that is to eat light before and during your flight and to avoid greasy foods and dairy. Speaking of food, we all know that airplane food isn't always palatable, so you can increase your long haul flight comfort by bringing some comfort food snacks. I'm a big fan of Lara bars, and whenever I travel, I have a few of these goodies just in case I'm really hungry and there's no meal in sight. Just remember, if you bring fresh fruit or vegetables on board the plane, you'll need to either consume them or discard them before entering a new country. Now, I'm not a big fan of neck pillows or eye masks or earplugs, each for their own reasons. Neck pillows take up space and are really not all that comfortable. And I don't like the feeling of eye masks on my face and the pressure of the band around my head. And earplugs block out the environment, which is <laughs> what they're meant to do, obviously. But for some reason, I'm not a fan. I just, I prefer to have a greater awareness of my surroundings. However, this shirt is a perfect alternative to eye masks because they doubled up the material at the front of the hood. So it works kind of like an eye mask without being a total blackout scenario, which again, I like to be aware of my surroundings. Also, as an added benefit, the hood keeps me warm. I'll leave more info about this merino wool hoodie in the description. If you plan on sleeping, which if it's a long haul flight, you would be well advised to do if at all possible, then you'll enhance your chances of sleeping a little bit better if you follow your regular sleep routine. So if you normally would brush your teeth and have a little stretch before going to bed when you're at home, then try to do that on the plane as well. Now, the ever present debate, what kind of earphones to wear? Everyone has pros and cons. Over the head headphones might not be comfy in terms of resting your head on the side, but earbuds can fall out. And if they're wireless, they'll be almost impossible to find if they do fall out. I love how these earbuds, because they have a special thing that goes over the ear that ensures that they're gonna stay in place no matter what I do. See? But for a slightly more comfortable option, you might wanna consider something like sleep phones. This band is super comfy and it goes around your head and it has Bluetooth uh, speakers on the sides so you can sleep or exercise or whatever and they won't move. The only challenge is I don't find that that blocks out the ambient noise as well as over the ear headphones or earbuds do. 
but to each their own. This is the light version, which I got so it would be handy for exercising as well as sleep. But they have a sleep version that's made of fleece that will be super comfy and might be a little bit better at blocking out the ambient noise. All right, last section, jet lag. As in, how to avoid it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? You can't avoid jet lag. And it doesn't matter how much travel experience you have, it is the almighty equalizer. But there are a few things you can do to minimize the effects. First up, melatonin. This over-the-counter supplement can help you sleep even if your body is on a different circadian rhythm. Take it before you go to sleep at your destination. If you want to get a jump start on getting onto the time zone that you're flying to, then you can even take melatonin on the plane at your destination's bedtime. Some people swear by changing their watches or clocks to the destination's time as soon as they board the plane. Then they sleep and eat according to the destination time rather than whatever's happening on the plane. Well, in theory, this is a great idea. I have tried it a few times and I find it problematic for red eye flights in particular because I should be sleeping when dinner is served and I may not be able to sleep because of the commotion of dinner being served or I might end up missing a whole night of sleep and I can be a bit of a zombie for a few days when that happens. If you want a little bit of scientific assistance in minimizing jet lag, there are a few apps specifically for jet lag out there to help you with this. Two popular choices are Time Shifter and Uplift Naturally. They help you adjust your circadian rhythm with a variety of techniques and exercises. I personally haven't tried either one, but I do know people who swear by them. All right, you've been patient. Here is the last and long awaited of my long haul flight hacks. I tried it for the first time on my last long haul flight and it totally worked. Are you ready? Here goes. If you have reason to believe that your flight isn't full and you can usually suss that out during online check-in, then you might wanna try this hack. Be the last person to board. Now, I am not usually that person. I like to get on the plane, get my luggage in the overhead bin above me and settle in. But, well, I could explain it, but you know what? I'll just show it to you instead. Okay, so a final update to my strategy of changing seats without having to pay for it. Uh, at the suggestion of a reader yesterday, he said wait to board until the very, very end because you are allowed to change seats on the airplane when everybody is has boarded and seated. So I waited very counterintuitively. I did not get in line and I waited and I waited and I waited. And I was one of the last people to board. And I said to the, uh, gated, to the flight attendant as I got on the plane, any chance I can change seats? She said, when everybody is seated, you can change seats. So as I was moving to the back of the plane where my seat was allocated, I saw a, a row free, uh, I spotted it, and I got my luggage uh, in the overhead compartment above it, and here I am, I, I have my window seat, I have a free row, and I'm good for the next nine and a half hours. All right, your turn. What is your expert air travel advice? Did any of my tips here surprise you? How will you change your next in-flight routine? Let it rip in the comments so we can all travel smart in style. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA the professional hobo, and thank you for watching.